Well, there is other data, though, uh, probably uh, that gets at the same principle to talk about uh, at ASCO uh, as far as how well these agents work. Mm -hmm. So nivolumab um, uh, has approval in melanoma and in lung cancer. Um, there's another agent, pembrolizumab, that I think you both know very well, um, that also has approval in melanoma and lung cancer, that, like nivolumab, uh, has some new data uh, in head and neck cancer. Um, so, uh, Tangi, maybe you can start off uh, for us uh, with the Keynote 12 data, what this was all about and what it showed. Yeah, as you pointed out, there's really two leading PD-1 inhibitors, one being nivolumab that you described in the Checkmate 141 study, and the other one is pembrolizumab, and we saw actually three abstracts or two data sets uh, at this ASCO meeting, and I will talk about one study, which is the Kino 12 study. So pembrolizumab uh, and nivolumab are very similar agents. I view them identical at almost. Uh, one is given every three weeks, one is given every two weeks. Other than that, I view them as very similar. And what we saw in the Kino 12 study is similar to what we saw in the other studies, which is there are some patients that have remarkable benefit uh, from these PD-1 inhibitors, where clearly it seems like we're reaching a plateau where patient, patients live for long periods of time. Um, we actually don't know exactly what that fraction is. I would say it's probably about 20, maybe 25 percent of patients who have long-term survival. But compared to a historic norm of close to zero. That is a major improvement. Mm -hmm. Usually once you have an inc incurable metastatic cancer, uh, patients will die, um, and this is different where some patients really we can change their lives. And so I think that's a major, major advantage. Um, the other thing is that there's clearly benefit in a significantly larger fraction of patients. So some patients have exceptional benefit, but then some patients have benefit where it looks like survival is, exp is e extended. Um, the other thing that's really important about these agents is that they're very well tolerated. The toxicity profile is extremely favorable. Most patients have no or very minimal side effects. I know some of my patients tell me, you know, Dr. Zyber, my biggest side effect is I have to come here every two or three <laughs> weeks. And, uh, yeah. and I tell them, well, you have to deal with this because it's an infusion. But it extends their lives and it's well tolerated. There are, though, severe side effects. They're rare, 1 to 2%. Uh, and it's really important to look out for those and screen for those. And typically, you think of lung toxicity like, uh, when the immune system gets too strong, we rev up the immune system, and sometimes the immune system, rather than attacking the cancer, can actually attack the lung or the gut, and that's something to look out for, but it's uncommon. So I think the efficacy is quite remarkable, at least for some patients it's life-changing, um, and the efficacy is, 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 is flanked by a very tolerable profile. So I think these drugs look like a major step forward. And if I look at the data, I suspect that both agents, both pembrolizumab and nivolumab, will actually get approved in the United States this year. And I think that's a major step forward as a new modality. And I think that it's important to talk about the toxicity, because if you look at the history of immunotherapy, our history isn't that good, right? So there were a lot of immunotherapies that have been tested in the past, and most of them were highly, highly toxic because basically what we were telling the immune system to do is just go. They were basically turning on, it's turning an on and on switch. Um, uh, things like high dose IL-2, which were very, very, very toxic, inducing sepsis or a very sick state in a patient patients would get very sick and even die from these therapies. So the enthusiasm for immunotherapy was a bit tempered appropriately as a result. But now with these new agents, it's really changing the way we can view them such that we're not viewing immunotherapy as a more toxic than chemotherapy option, but actually as a significantly less, than, less toxic regimen than traditional set of toxics. 